Ladies and gentlemen, it's Friday, it's night, it's time for some Friday Night Improv with the Hillwise Cool Cats. Hi, everybody. Hello, hello. hello. <laughs> Sorry about the timer glitch there at the end. Oh, whoops. If you didn't realize yet, this is completely live. This is completely spontaneous, on the spot improv. Uh, and let's just go around. Everybody introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Jillian. Hi, I'm Alyssa. Yes. Hey, I'm Michael. Hi, I'm Rob. Laurel is muted. Laurel is muted. Uh, I'm Laurel. Um, I was hearing it's. I'm, he was hearing well, aliens. I'm okay now. <laughs> good. good. I got two volumes happening. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. You're doing good. So uh, tonight, the Hillwines Cool Cats are super excited to be doing another improv classic, the Armando for all of you. Now, before we get going into what exactly an Armando is, if you are new to our show, uh, we need you to start typing in your comment section the first word that comes to your head. Just one word, whatever the word is, type it in your comment section, and we might use it as our inspiration for tonight's show. Uh, does anyone... Any, anyone feel compelled to explain what an Armando is to our audience? I feel like I'm hogging the camera. Sure, sure. Rob, take it away. Yeah. Okay, so you have a thing called improv and, and it's the people making the make em ups. Uh, <laughs> and so they do that comedically. And an Armando is specifically, you'll get a suggestion and then anyone uh, on stage or in Zoom as it were, uh, who has any sort of story or memory associated or that they just think of when they hear that suggestion uh, can share that. And then from there, we will take aspects of that story, whether characters, whether dynamics, whatever, and create scenes based on those. I almost said create stories. We're storytellers here. Um, but that's, <laughs> I, I won't play us up that much. So yes, please continue sending in your comments and suggestions. Uh, we're gonna give you guys a couple more minutes uh, to get them in. Um, and then if anybody here on the team sees a word that just like hits you and you're like, oh, I got a story, go ahead, shout it out and we'll get started. How's everybody been doing though? Ducks. Ducks, you got what? Okay, got, our I've... word, our suggestion is ducks. Yeah, so, um... Our, um, I lived in Oklahoma for a while and uh, for about three years. So um, I, uh, I worked at this HOA uh, and the, uh, there was a, a, a pool there and the ducks would come and make a little nest and a little home there. And um, so one, one morning I roll in and uh, hear this mom duck is just squawk and squawk and really loud and everything. And I, no one is in the office. So I, I look out at the pool and my boss is out there and uh, she's, uh, she's got this mom duck and then all the little babies are in the pool and got the pool skimmer and they're trying to get it the butt ducks in a box so she's can you help me i'm like i'm not and i'm let me tell you uh this is no help when it comes to wild animals uh good thing i work at a zoo uh so anyway um she somehow gets the mom to get out of the pool and she's scooping the baby ducks into the box and we're and i'm like what do we do with these so she picks up the box of baby ducks and walks them into the her office and sets them down and they're like squeak, squeak, beep, 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 beep. 
and I'm traumatized at this point already because the little babies are chirping and the mom is like flying around the pool area looking and squawking for ducks and everything. She's calling animal control. They're like, we can't help you, lady. So we have to take these ducks, these baby ducks out to the wild and just hope to God that the mom doesn't come back with all of her little babies and everything. And it took forever to get the babies and scoop them because they're all like swimming real fast and away from the net. And uh, that uh, she didn't, the mom and duck didn't come back, but there were other ducks. And that was always a big point of contention with the, uh, with the HOA folks. They uh, didn't want poop in the pool. And uh, yeah, they, they, they had to get those ducks out of the pool. Because they were all a hundred years old, so yeah. Ah, so that's that was basically ducks for me. It's great, good times. Yes, question. Yeah, I it might be very specific point. Yes. What kind of box do you use to transport the ducks? Because my mind immediately went to cardboard, and I thought that'd be wet. That would just kind of like collapse on itself. It it was a cardboard box with a towel in the bottom. Oh, that's clever. Mm. Okay, smart. Mm -hmm. Question, did anyone wash their hands after this? Oh, uh, I sure did. <laughs> I sure as heck did, that's okay. for sure. Uh, yeah, but I, I didn't touch them, but still wash my hands. And, and one more question. So this sure. was a, pub, a public pool, but- uh, It was for the community. <laughs> okay, but not- And the ducks. ducks aren't part of the community. They are. Because Oklahoma, everything is wild uh, and conservative at the same time. I don't know how that works, but yeah, it's uh, it's a weird state motto, but it, it, it is it, weird. It, yes, it functions. wild but conservative. <laughs> yeah, that's on the license plate. All right, okay. Wait. Without further ado, Hillwine's Cool Cats presents ducks. Ducks. Welcome to the office tour, everybody. Um, Quackers, Squeakers, McGee, can you all, you guys all stay away from the crackers, stay away from the cheese. Um, welcome to the office tour. Um, the, but we figured you wandered in here, so we might as well just show you around anyway. The, we, we're not allowed to have any of the crackers. The crackers looked like they were laid out for someone to, to enjoy. Yeah, those were for people. Yes, those were for people and not ducks. Oh, oh but they're they're at our level. Like they're they're on a lower table. Yeah, that was a mistake on our part. I'm sorry. We're sorry. Uh, yeah. Guys, does this does this change does this change what we want to do today? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm so. What's your name? Pam. Pam. I'll be honest for the whole group. We were just kind of standing outside the door, looking in through the glass and seeing all the crackers. And we thought yeah. that's about the only reason we wanted to come in here. So if, there's, if, if the crackers aren't available, then um, we don't really even know what you do here, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, uh, we're, I mean, we're just a municipal uh, office trying to just protect the city. You're not, um, you're not part of animal control, are you? <laughs> No, we don't really get animals. Ooh. That's why we ended up letting you in anyway. Yeah. Okay. We are, we are not wolves. fans. We We're are not, not fans of animal control. No, no, they're no. I have I have two cats at home. Ooh. You don't know any big dogs or wolves that are in the area, do you? No, it's a pretty urban environment. So no, no uh, wolves in these parts. So question. Mm -hmm. Uh. This is an office, and you what sell homes in this office? Well, we answer calls, file paperwork. You know, it's like in your in your uh, purview, uh, you know, moving sticks with your mouth. We do that all day. And and the people who call you, they get crackers. I mean, they may have crackers in their homes, but we don't provide them crackers over the phone now. So if we call you, we have crackers? No, no crackers. Crackers are for the employees. We get hungry. <laughs> so if we work here, we get crackers? Uh, I, 
guess this is the legality part of the equal opportunity employer. Um, you're, you're not going to discriminate against us just because we're waterfowl, are you? Oh, man. Because um, I, I couldn't guess... help but notice you have a parakeet in a cage, I might add, in the corner. <laughs> yeah, that's just our pet, the office pet, Willie. Um, a pet? A he's pet, cute. He's cute. He belongs to Sharon. She brings him in sometimes to boost company morale. Did he agree to belong to her? I don't know. She adopted him. So. Does he get crackers? Yeah. He, yeah, he gets fed. I mean, mm. I don't feed him. She feeds him. He's her Do you want a pet? Do you want what? four pets? Do you want, do you want four you want pets? Dwarfs make great pets. 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 Four pets? Great pets. Well, great pets. Mm-hmm. Well, great, good. Great, yeah. great. Great pet, great pet, great pet, great pet, 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 pet. pet. Oh, yeah, my husband won't mind. Come on, yay! Uh, so we can have these crackers. Yay! Um, Mr. McDuck, McDuck, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to say that the injuries, uh, are quite substantial. I don't know why you thought diving into a giant pile of coins <laughs> would just allow you to swim around and really I, I, I can't help but think that um, your broken legs and arms and various bruising is, is kind of brought on by yourself and uh, there's nothing really I can do if I'm being honest with you. I appreciate your honesty <laughs> and I love the sound of money. Mm-hmm. I guess I thought that it was going to go in to my pockets and I swam. I didn't realize how heavy bah! Coins. I mean, I, if I can, if I can just ask, I, I want to know why. If you're going to have a vault and you're going to fill it with money so that you can swim into it, you're you're installing a diving board. Why not paper money? It's like paper. Paper is a lot lighter. You could probably get in between paper money much easier. Gold coins are famously hard. Those coins are worth more than the paper, and I. Used to be an Olympic diver. Mm-hmm. You should have seen me. We've all we've all seen the photos of you in the sailor suit. Yeah. Tag out, ne- Rob. Yeah. So so, Mr. McDuck, we've uh, we've converted all your gold into Bitcoin. Uh, here's the voucher for it. It's the code <laughs> that you just type it in. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna fill up your vault here with money or with uh, water uh, instead of the money, and you'll be able to swim around in it no problem. I mean, we printed it on waterproof paper, so you could probably float that on top of the water and, and dive at it. Shouldn't do any damage. So it'll be like swimming around in your gold coins. Just You'll be able to move through it because it's a fluid. That sounds tempting. Uncle Scrooge, Uncle Scrooge, do we finally have a pool? We can yes, finally Huey. swim in the pool? Yes, Huey, we do, but I'm not sure about this Bitcoin stuff. You youngins know more about this Bitcoin stuff. What, uh, can I trust him? It's so shiny, it's so shiny. The Bitcoin? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, it's a a feature of the waterproof nature of the paper that is reflective. Where's Louie? Louie, what do you think of Bitcoin? Can I eat it? No, you can't eat it. It's not a cracker. It's money. I'm going to put this in my vault, and then you kids can go in the pool and swim around. This young man has been kind enough to install a pool and not take me for a chump. I I would never do that, Mr. McDuck. I mean, you're a pillar of this community. It's Really, it was a privilege to be able to help you convert your gold into Bitcoin and and take care of filling up the uh, vault with water. So you're, are these, are, are these your sons? No, they're my nephews. nephews. I mean, grandnephews. Grandnephews. Okay. All right. 
It's unclear. Did your parents unclear. know you're here? It's so clear. We we they they kind of just dropped us off and then went on adventures. We don't know our real parents. Oh. It's a shame. They go from home to home. Like it. Pond to pond. Pool to it. pool. I oh, think we got stuck in an office okay. once. It. It. Uncle Scrooge. Yeah. What happened to your Scottish accent? <laughs> 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 Oop, why can't go okay. <laughs> Deborah, um, I appreciate how much you want to give back to the office. Um, but I I called you in here today because well you can't be bringing wild exotic animals into the office on a weekly basis, especially when we do not have the adequate facilities to take care of these wild exotic pets. And I can't keep losing hours chasing them around, trying to make sure that they don't get into areas that they can't go into, okay? I hear you, I hear you, boss. Uh, I was just trying to boost company morale. I appreciate that. I think that you are a dedicated team player. Uh, however, Baby Komodo dragons. One, I don't know how you legally obtained these. Don't worry and, about it. Well, I do worry about it because I, I wonder what the legal implications <laughs> would be for our, our company here. And two, um, I don't know if you realize this, but they are actually uh, a, a, a dangerous animal. Like they are, they're, they are dangerous. <laughs> and and I have one that has been crawling around that I can't find. I don't know where it is. I can't oh, find it. It's so cute. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. Just pick it up. Pick it up and put it in your box. Put it in your, okay. Thank you. See, that's what I'm talking about. These things are wild. They can't be controlled. They can't be contained. They don't belong in an office. I feel like you don't have late. much time. I feel like you don't enjoy zoos very much. I don't, no. I, I hate the idea of going and visiting them, but at least at a zoo, everything's got its own little cage and its own little area. And oh my God, it's getting out of oh, your box. Oh, it's sorry, getting here, out. come on. Okay, come on, little guy. Okay, back in your back in the box. Sorry. Thank you. Um, I. You called me into the meeting right when I was about to feed it, and they get a little handsy when you don't feed them. I'm I sure. learned that from a Google search. Okay. All right. Well, put it put it back All in right, the okay, box. Here. Put it in this box. Smile Take and Jimmy. The parking lot. Here, I got. I got it. I got it. I got it. I put it back in. Tag out everyone except Alyssa. They're calling it the Jurassic Park for Komodo dragons, a horrible disaster that has left nine dead. And we have the owner of the zoo here, Alyssa. Alyssa, can you explain your actions today? Um, I was just trying to boost zoo morale, really. Um, Do you we... find it boosts morale by having nine dead zoo employees and multiple scared children? as the Komodo dragons have broken loose based on, and I quote here from the uh, program that you give out, uh, they're just so darn cute. I thought that they could get some air. They walk around and I let them do it. Oh, look at them walking around. <laughs> so cute. Really, that's, you've really nailed it. Uh, great, A plus reporting. Um, yeah, you know, I brought some in a prior job to the office. They weren't thriving indoors. I got a job at the zoo. I introduced them to the outdoors. They were thriving. Some people had to suffer the consequences. It Some is what people, it is. It is what it is. Yeah. Some people have to suffer the con and, and we have a whole, <laughs> and because of that, we have a whole Skyfall Macau casino pit situation going on. I mean, through donors' contributions, I feel like we can rebuild. Now, you're up for re-election as head of the zoo, is that correct? It is. And you you think that your response of, it is what it is, will <laughs> calm the people who think that this is entirely preventable and not that many people needed to die at all? Wow. 
you really hit the hard hitting questions. Um, yeah, I mean, if you bring in <laughs> less kimono dragons, those kimono dragons you were asking me about, there's been a couple of different incidents. I, if I heard Komodo dragons, if you need to correct me about no, what no, no. actually it's got Komodo loose at dragons. the zoo. It's Komodo dragons. Um, if, you know, you bring in less Komodo dragons, less people die. Uh, but I wanted to go full force because I thought that the community would benefit from a full family of Komodo dragons. By, so by your own admission, by bringing in more Komodo dragons than necessary, you knew that more <laughs> lives would be at risk. And, however, you thought that that was just going to entertain the people before they died a horrible death by Komodo dragon jaw. Yep, basically. Okay. Coming up tag, after the tag break. Out Alyssa. <laughs> tag out Alyssa. Tag out Alyssa. Yeah, I was there. Mm -hmm. I was Can there. you tell us about what you saw? Oh God. I was, I had my dipping dots. Mm -hmm. I was eating them. And uh, and out of the corner of my eye, I see movement. And it was a cute little Komodo dragon. And I went up to it. And it grabbed my leg and tried to drag me. I'd like to interject. Um, that kid fell off a scooter going through the zoo. Um, <laughs> Yeah. It's... So he fell off a scooter by your, I'm going to put it in quotes, fell off a scooter by yeah. your own description. Yeah. And by your implication, therefore deserved to have their legs mauled. Uh, she was near an open area where- You the... opened it. It's your open area. You built it to be such. We wanted it to be interactive for guests. Is this the level of interactivity you were hoping for? Who could foresee? I mean, interaction between animals and people is so broad. We have an expert on the line who said that they could foresee everything that was going to happen. Hello. Hi, hi, thank you. Thank you so much for having me, yes. Yeah, so before the zoo opened, you said that this was all definitely 100% gonna happen and that people were going to die. Yes. You see, um, I run a psychic hotline, 1-800-533-4344. Uh, please. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, it's a loft, but we've divided up uh, the space into individual rooms. Uh, the walls are made out of cardboard, but we put down towels on the floor. So, you know, as long as you only spill directly onto the towel on the floor, like, <laughs> the wall should remain structurally sound. Now, you said you uh, you said you're a visual arts artist. I am. Yes, I just graduated <laughs> from college, uh -huh. and I'm really looking for like a new, innovative, eco-friendly kind of space. This is the place for that. This is the, we're all very we're all innovators here. We're hey. we're into the ecology. You know, we found this abandoned paint factory, and we said, hey. We're artists. Paint is our medium. This is like going yes. to the root source for our inspiration. Now, I have to ask, mm -hmm. is this cardboard recycled cardboard that has been approved by the HOA? No, it's all been reclaimed from the back of the Whole Love Foods. It. Mm -hmm. Love it. We're, okay. we're, also, we're also all freegans here. So like we were going there for, to get food anyway. And we looked at all this cardboard and we thought, hey, those would make good walls. I agree. Now this is, this is fantastic. And and this towel, is mm -hmm. this polyester blend? Uh, no, it's it's all cotton. We basically all went to our, our grandmas and our nanas and we said, hey, can we have the old linens? We need them for the, for mm -hmm. the space, for the mm -hmm. commune, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's a lot of really cool artists here. We've got visual artists like yourself. We've got people who work with sound and people who work with smell. All the senses, really, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. I, I'm getting such a good vibe from this place. Like, that's what we. That's what we aim for. Plus, there's some leftover paint in the basement, and I'm pretty sure those fumes are hitting us. You know, you gotta love a good fume high. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say it. Is this is this commune 
pet friendly? Well, we don't we don't see animals as something that you could possess like a pet. Like we think all living beings are equal. Mm. So like if you had like a duck roommate, that would okay. totally be cool. Okay. Um, we did have to draw the line at like carnivorous animals because we're sure. all we're all vegetarians here. Sure, of course. You yeah. know, they don't belong. Well, just their choice. they their should choice. be in their habitat. You know. Right. Yeah. Right. That is fair. Okay. All right. Well, you know, I got to talk it over with the duck and the llama. It's so funny you mentioned the duck because I have a duck. Oh, nice. Um, but, you know, I'm thinking at, you know, 1500 a month, this is completely reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. 1500 hours in the co-op and the space yeah. is yours. I, yes, this is fantastic. Yeah. We don't, we don't use money. We use time as currency because it's, it's really the only thing that we all have an equal amount of, you know, 24 hours in the day. You know, that is so poetic and mm -hmm. so true. I mean, I could give you $30, but what does that really mean? What would I use it for? <laughs> Nothing. You know, maybe, Nothing pin it, maybe pin it up to my cardboard wall just for a little variety, you know, make a little cash collage, but, you know. Brilliant. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. Now I do some um, welding work with my paintings. Is all of this fireproof? Um, the cardboard and the linens are definitely not fireproof. <laughs> but you know, uh, all atoms were created in stars anyway. So like True. if there was a fire, you'd just be returning things back to their natural elements. <laughs> okay. I, I love that. I love that. Okay. All right, so don't have to worry about that. Okay, and I do not have renter's insurance. Oh, we don't believe in insurance. Okay, you know okay. that's just a that's just a system set up by the man to try to mm. hedge his bets against risk. And like, what better risk is there than to be an artist without insurance? Right, you know that's what I'm thinking. And like, yes, okay, mm -hmm. I like this. I think I'll take it. Great. I wanted to uh, jump in actually and uh, do a story about burgers, which was another suggestion. Uh, that's our other. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, and it's only tangentially related to burgers, but it is something that has stuck with me for about ten years because I'm angry. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, I had a best friend in high school, and uh, we spent all our time together. Um, and then when we went off to uh, different universities or colleges, as you Americans call it. Um, uh, college. We, we spent a little less time together and then uh, we both uh, met our significant others and decided to meet back around the uh, holidays and uh, let them meet each other, we'd catch up, all that stuff. We went to, uh, it's called The Works, it's a chain at least in Canada of like super over the top burgers um, and uh, in my memory, uh, we went there for burgers. I must have suggested because I enjoyed it in my uh, college town, um, university town. And <laughs> uh, and then we got there and, and then she, uh, his girlfriend revealed that uh, she was a vegetarian, which is not a big deal, but uh, at least in, in 2011, um, it, I felt like a jerk for uh, uh, suggesting a burger place and not, uh, anticipating that they probably wouldn't have vegetarian options or, but then, I don't know, looking back, I kind of wish that uh, somebody had just said something in advance. Um, and then what actually uh, was like the biggest part of the night was we went to go see Les Miserables, uh, starring Hugh Jackman and uh, um, oh! others. Um, others. The movie, the movie. Yes, okay. the movie. And, oh. uh, and so, uh, is a packed theater and everyone's in there and it's a long movie and there are moments in the movie that I like I think Anne Hathaway's great in it but um, me and my significant other sitting next to each other uh, were kind of like turning to each other multiple times just going like this is, this is bad right <laughs> uh, and I was so convinced that I knew what my high school best friend liked and didn't like because uh, we we both like did musicals and stuff in our teens. Like I, I we went in like expecting to like Les Miserables, and uh, 
So I think he and her were like sitting behind us because we came so late that we were sitting near the front of the screen. We couldn't get like four seats next to each other. We had to find like two and two. So we don't see them until after the movie. And there was a plan to like maybe go get a drink or something afterwards. And so we come out of that. Uh, and as soon as like we're clear of the crowd or everything, and it's the first time we get to talk to them, me and my significant other just go like, that was terrible, right? Oh my God. Just, ah, uh, so I, I don't even remember what I specifically disliked. I just had an immense dislike of it. And they look at us crestfallen uh, as because they <laughs> loved the movie, loved the movie. She really loved the movie. And then he seemed to love the movie. Uh, read into that what you want. But, um, and it's like, oh, oh, okay, well. Uh, I guess we just, uh, I don't know, I guess if you guys like to, cool. And I tried to play it off nice and it's like, why don't we go, you know, get a drink or whatever. And they're like, no, I think we're going to go home. I think we're going to, and um, that was 2011, 2012. I've never seen them since. They moved across the country. They got married. I was not invited. Uh, they have had a whole life. Um, uh, in their 20s, and uh, Les Miserables uh, ruined uh, that friendship that it went from like middle school all the way to high school. Wow. Good question. Yeah. yeah. Did he, did your friend know that his girlfriend was a vegetarian? I must assume, like, they'd, we'd all been with our significant others long enough, like almost a yeah. year or something, that uh, we knew what everybody likes like my my uh my partner is uh, a partial vegetarian but like we'll have like chicken or fish or something and so that was fine at that restaurant but yeah gotcha yeah yeah mm -hmm. Did, there, was there like a follow-up text that no. night of like great time no final contact was well i guess if you like it <laughs> that's great i have talked <laughs> to some of his ex-girlfriends more recently than I have talked to him. Okay. Anyway, That's he's in Colorado, sad. so he's your problem now. <laughs> that figures. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Burgers. Burgers. <laughs> Burger heavy story. <laughs> uh, well, Mr. Uh, Hugh Jackman, we've got the uh, early reviews in on uh, mm -hmm. Les Mis. And uh, apparently, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I have, sorry. I'm sorry, I have to tell you this, but it's it's very divisive. It it's splitting audiences, um, and it's not just splitting audiences in terms of whether or not they like the movie or dislike the movie. But we've had some reports of some friendships being ended by the movie. I got to say, I do like that. Uh, I do like it because you know, art is to make people feel things. People are feeling things. I think mm -hmm. we did it. High five. Oh, oh, okay. We're the guys in research. We're not used to getting to actually high five the movie stars. Hugh, uh, I, Hugh, I gotta cut in here. I, I don't think this is necessarily a, a great thing. You're, you're really ascending right now. We just had a couple of hits with uh, some of those Wolverine spinoffs. I don't think any. Oh yeah, ever people love people love the Wolverine movies. No friendships were were de destroyed when people saw those movies. Well, they uh, it was it was divisive among comic book fans. Hugh, I, I feel like you gotta just play some safer stuff. I don't know. Well, like you know, I I, I wanted to stretch. I want to show everybody I was a showman, and I could sing and dance. You know, Hugh, Wolverine, you on, I just look good without a you shirt. You keep on saying to me that you're the greatest showman, and I don't think anyone's going to believe it. I don't think, Michael, can, do you have any research at all about, like, um, does anyone feel like Hugh Jackman could conceivably play a great showman? Well, again, half the people in the audience thought you were a great singer and a great dancer, and those I, are sort of core elements of being a showman. I am a greatest showman. I am. Yeah, but again, is it, is it worth the risk of putting out a movie like that if it's going to divide people who've been friends since middle school and, and now they're not <laughs> going to talk to each other anymore? And we have here people weren't invited to each other's weddings. Uh, people moved across international borders to get away from each other after they didn't agree on whether or not they liked the movie or hated you, it. This is not, look, I've known you since middle school and you uh. need to believe me when I say 
this is not good for your career. What? Were you, I'm sorry. I am the greatest showman. What if I do some circus circus movie and I'm, you know. No one's going to go for that, Hugh. Dance. This is, this is the fight we've had out, for an out. entire friendship. Time it keeps out. coming back. Time out. Hugh, you, you have an Australian accent, but your agent has a, an American accent. <laughs> and you two have been friends since middle school? Yeah. Now, the agent has no <laughs> talent. Hugh, you've got a lot of a talent. Is this whole Australian accent just a ruse? Is it, you're just acting? You're pretending to be an Australian? You don't answer that question. Look, we have worked so long for so, so <laughs> hard for so long. Do not this answer is... that question or I'm gone. This friendship will be over. This is, I, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go get the executives from Universal. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to give a toast. I'd like to give a toast to the people we didn't invite to our wedding. Honey, join me. Join me. Okay. So it was 2010. And Prince of Arabia came out with Jake Gyllenhaal. And that movie was shit. And my ex boyfriend, emphasis on the ex, said, Honey, this will be a great first date movie. And I said, okay, because he was cute. And what was that movie? Shit. Just like him. To Tony. To Tony. Honey, Jillian. Yeah. Ah. Uh, this, wow. this is a polyamorous relationship, so we'll get to Rob in a second. Okay. Um. I... Uh, toast to um, my Uncle Steve, who was also not invited. Mostly because I lost his address after he moved out to Oregon to start a cult and become a wanted man in three states. Um, but Uncle Steve, if you can hear this toast, um, just keep making jewelry out of those juniper seeds. To Uncle Steve. To Uncle Steve. I want to give a toast to Kevin. And I think we all know why Kevin isn't here. That bastard. <laughs> Kevin was Jillian's public speaking coach. And he did such a <laughs> terrible job that we said he can't come to the wedding. And you know what? I think we were all in the right. Freeze Cheers. everybody. Michael, come on. Steve, what do you think they're doing right now? At the wedding? I, yeah. I don't want to think about it. It was so disappointing that we weren't invited. It is. And that they would specifically bar you from going. You know? I mean, if, you, if you're going to bar somebody who knows how to do public speaking? I think they were afraid maybe. you might give it an impromptu toast and show them all up. You know, probably. it's probably a real relief for them because people get a lot of stress about giving a speech. I mean, that's that's half your business right there, right? Is helping people get over their stage fright. Yeah. And, you know, it's like they just took you out, you know? So reduce the competition. And you, you know, the law's no longer looking for you. I think they, you're, they think you're dead. Yeah, I faked my Look, death you know real good. We, for their, for the first anniversary, you and I are going back over there. Let's start, let's start in? heading there now. Okay, yeah. let's do it. The first anniversary party, we're there. Unfreeze. I thought I did okay. No. <laughs> no. You no. have other redeeming qualities, honey. Yeah. We love we love so many things about you. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like what? Look, Tell me. Um well, when Alyssa introduced you to our uh, relationship, I thought you had kind eyes. Thank you. And that was enough to change the entire basis of our relationship. Right, Alyssa? Yeah, just, you know, 
thought it would uh, add some additional fun into the mix. Mm-hmm. Fun. Lots of fun. <laughs> Sensing some animosity from you. No, no, no. Look, if, if I was angry, then, then what, what? What, what, well, like, why, why, why isn't Will here? Why isn't Will here, my anger management coach, you know? And he wasn't invited <laughs> to the wedding. He didn't really do a great job. Of what the fuck did you just out. say? You, you didn't invite Will? Edit. Edit. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome to the works, uh, Canada's largest chain restaurant uh, company after Tim Hortons, obviously. <laughs> Uh, what can I get you on your burgers? We got all the best meats that Canada has to offer. You know, we got we got our bacon, we got the Americans bacon, we got cow burgers, we got moose burgers, geese burgers. What about do you have some walrus burgers? Yeah, yeah, we just got those in. Yeah. You can definitely throw them. some some uh, walrus burgers. One of those. Um, yeah, go I, ahead, babe. Honey, um, I really didn't want to bring this up tonight especially in a public place like this. Um, but um, I don't eat meat. Oh, that's OK. We've got chicken burgers. Yeah. And uh, we've got, got seafood some, burgers. we got some salmon burgers, too. No, 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 no. no. Um, 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 chick I, I don't eat animals. Well, what else is there? Hmm? Ve vegetables? This is you just Fruit? you just want a burger patty with syrup on it? Well, I, I mean, syrup's the only vegetable we have here. It comes yeah. out of trees. Well, yeah, it's plant based. Oh, does that make it fruit? Uh, no, that's a plant based. It's plant based. Plant based. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Um, plant based. I could eat a syrup burger, mm -hmm. um, but if you have things like tomatoes and lettuce and pickles, mustard, ketchup. Uh, vegan well, ketchup we have. We have, we've got these ketchup flavored chips. I could just crunch those up and throw them on the the maple syrup burger for you. Oh. You want something like that poutine stuff? Oh, like that's only available. In, and... That's only available in our uh, branches in Quebec. Well, uh, yeah. that, okay. I can't do cheese. I'm 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 more than just you know not. It's nothing animal. Nothing animal at all. I can't do animals. Well, this is maple syrup for you then, huh? Are you sure that's enough? I mean, if that's what they have, then I guess that's what it is. And, and I just won't complain about it or whatever. Why yeah, do you'll, you you'll have the caloric this? intake you'll need for the meal. Uh, there just won't be any nutrients. I can take my vitamins later when we go home after tonight's date. Well, I guess I guess so. Kind of wish you would have told me this before I dragged you over here, Burger. I, <clears throat> the works. I, mean, I just, you know, the last time I told somebody this, it, it it ended things, and I just, I really wanted this to keep going for a while, so I I, I didn't mention it. Okay. Okay. Well, um, okay. I was gonna put a strain. On. I eat nothing but meat. Oh. Canadian bacon, regular American bacon. Uh. All kind, like Norwegian bacon. Uh, I like Peruvian bacon. I like all the bacons and steak. Get out of town. I go whole you know, hog. On I'm a really, steak. I'm really, I'm really sorry that you know here we have works here. I've gotten in the middle of your relationship. Uh, it's, it's not what we were trying to do. You know, it's it's not what this store is about. You know. Yeah, but it, I mean. It, you work with people. You must experience things like this. Like, like we're gonna be fine, right? Like, we can make this work, right? Sure. It's not like you guys know. disagree about you know movies, right? Did you guys seen the same movies and you like them? Well, <clears throat> it's a sore subject. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, everybody, if you can come in, um, I'm happy to take questions about the new. Canadian food pyramid. Any questions you have at all, happy to explain. Yes, thank you. First in, in the front row there. I heard um, maple syrup oh. is an, it's an entire category. Um, yes, we did find that 
really, you need to be able to hibernate for the winter and the kind of coating of the bloodstreams that the maple syrup is able to do does kind of insulate you pretty well. So we found that it was important to just prioritize that to the top of the list. Hi, yes. Um, I'd like to know um, the process for how you decided uh, that two thirds of it needed to be bacon. Mm. Right, well, I'll be honest, we had a, a big debate because up here we do love the regular bacon as we call it. Mm -hmm as well as uh, our bacon. Um, and they are different types, uh, common misconception, we, and we do have both. Uh, but uh, we couldn't decide which one to prioritize. Like, they had to be equal, they had to be equal. And so the only thing that we could think to do was to give each of them one third. And that really quickly took up a lot of the pyramid, uh, as you can see. Gotcha. Yep. Pardon, pardon, uh, oui, le, oui, mont, oui. le Mont Québécois, où mm -hmm. est le pékin québécois? Le Québécois bacon? Oui. Uh, this is an English-speaking town, all right? Uh, no, 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 but Canada is a bilingual country. You must respect the Québécois and our culture. Look, look, I made sure to hold this press conference outside of Ottawa. We're not bilingual here, okay? You get back to your place. I'll stay in mine, all right? Merde. Go enjoy your eclairs. Hi, thank you. Um, hi, yes. So I noticed that the fourth block down on mm. the food pyramid for Canada is nothing but poutine. Yes. And I just want to know who invented it and why. Well, Jack Poutine was one of our best inventors. He uh, he one day just kind of had, as he tells it, his uh, fridge explode. And that really just led to a whole bunch of items being thrown together. He had cheese curds, he had the gravy, he had the fries, all just these kind of leftovers from various completely different gross meals that he had previously had. And so when they came together, you know, up in Canada, we, uh, we have a saying, you gotta use every part of the food buffalo. And so he didn't wanna waste any of that, you know? Oh, what part I'm, of the sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. I, I drank a whole bottle of the syrup and I think I'm having a heart attack. So I'm okay, well, if you just wanna attention. wash that down with like some Smarties, just like a whole box of Smarties and, uh, <sighs> Yeah, we and, and do you? Sorry. I'll be sure. I'll be sure. Okay, bye. Oh, one every every press conference. Uh, yeah. And if uh if there are no other questions, then uh, here to serenade us out is Justin Bieber. Baby, 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 <laughs> baby, baby, baby. Baby, baby, baby. <laughs> <Our show. laughs> oh, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, I learned so much about, I learned so much about waterfowl you. and Canada. I had no idea. Had Michael no idea. knows French. Un petit peu. French. <laughs> Moi aussi, un petit peu. I want to say I don't hate French people. I just ran out of French that I can speak. So I had to kick him out of the scene. I apologize. Apologies to the Quebecois. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for joining us for some Friday Night Improv. We hope you had a great time. Uh, if you really like this, please leave us a comment. Let us know. Uh, be sure to follow the B&G Improv page so you can see all of the amazing shows that are coming up on our Friday nights that are happening because time continues to go on, as we know. Um, Does it? <laughs> Is it? Won't stop. It's only Won't stop. April 3rd. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's what I thought. But my, my Fitbit says it's August. I don't know That's what's not right. happening. Can in be Canada, right. it's, in, it's the Canadian calendar. Canadian it's calendar. Oh. <laughs> Get it now. Well, we have 18 <laughs> months of snow, so it just throws everything out of whack. That's true. <laughs> and that 27-hour day, that's weird, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you thank know, they you say guys. 26 in the dark, one in the light. Yes, yes. And each hour Sorry. only has 53 minutes in it. God, it's very cool. Let's let Jillian end the show. Sorry. Right, we're going to well, <laughs> let you guys go. Have a great weekend. Stay safe out there. Stay dry. If you're getting whacked by Hurricane Laura, she moves across our country. And we'll see you guys later. Bye. Au revoir. <laughs>